I haven't been the same since that day. Hi guys, my name is Yael. I was born and raised in Hawaii. Um, I'm 18 years old. I just finished my first year of college and I am attending SOS here in Japan 2019. So today I wanted to share my testimony with you guys. Um, I was raised in the church. I'm a pastor's kid actually, I'm one of those kids. Um, I have a really large family. I'm the second of six kids. Um, just background on my own family, my mom's from Israel and my dad was born and raised in Hawaii, which um, that's again where I was born and brought up. So I have um, a similar to Okinawa upbringing. I have that island background, obviously not super Japanese, but um, yeah. Um, on top of being that large Christian family, pastor's family too, um, we had one more stereotypical trait to throw in there. Um, I was homeschooled. Um, that's a big part of my upbringing. We were always with my mom, which I'm super grateful for. But in the eighth grade, I started to beg my mom daily, send me to public school, mom. I told her, send me to public school. Um, after months of this, um, I didn't know, like growing up, you know, you just hear prayer works, prayer works, but I had never personally seen that in my own young Christian faith. But behind the scenes, I found out that my parents were praying as I begged them every single day. So they prayed for me and my dad sat me down and he said, Yael, you can go to school. But if one wrong thing happens, um, we're yanking you out of there. So I was excited. I was super nervous. Um, but my first day, you know, finding classes, that's, um, it was a start of my high school career. Um, I took the bus every day. I would walk up the hill and I would see um, girls and guys um, older than me, but I, in my mind, I hadn't been exposed to a lot of things of the world, so I assumed that only really, really bad kids were the ones who were sinning, were the ones who were tripping up, were the ones who were partying, were the ones who um, dressed immodestly. I thought that that was only really bad kids, and I would never be that person. Um, I, I really didn't have an opportunity to see the world other than this first initial experience at only 13 years old. Um, I started going to a youth group with a friend that I met at school. Um, at that time, I had only been exposed to Calvary Chapel, which I'm super grateful for my upbringing. Um, at that youth group, we didn't have to bring our Bibles. We didn't have to be accountable. Are you in your devos? Do you have a prayer life? And even being a young Christian, I was convicted by that. I remember that they would, um, we would look at a picture at youth group and like, um, where are you in your faith? Are you diving deep into your faith with the Lord, but we would never talk about um, the gospel. We would never talk about the Bible and just really um, get into that word. And those, the mentors, great, great, wonderful people. I would never bash them, but they never, um, they never motivated us to get into our devotional life. Um, and that's not to bash that church. They, I'm sure that they do a lot of really awesome things, but for me personally, I wanted something that was more, um, from the word, as Pastor Chuck Smith says. Um, so this was my freshman year, and then fast forward to my sophomore year, um, this sin that I saw in the world at my school, I, I became comfortable with it. I didn't have that word to fall back on, so I began hanging out with these people who I thought were sinful, and I began doing the things that they would do. I would, um, I fell greater and greater into my sin and my lies and my bad habits, um, it became so bad that I, I messed up real bad and I got grounded from January until the end of the school year and my parents just, they said you're only allowed to participate in sports, it's the only way you're getting out of the house. So after my season was over, I, um, I said hey, let's, I told my friends, hey let's join the other sports team. So we did. Um, on that sports team the girls were so crude to me, they would say mean things behind my back, I would find out. Um, but in the midst of this, God was working in my life, and even when I did see these things, or when I would even participate in some things, I knew, I knew that I shouldn't be doing them, and I did them anyway. Um, every time my dad would lecture me, hey, what are you doing? I'd say, I don't know, I don't know why I'm doing these things, I know it's wrong. And even though I wasn't fully walking with the Lord, I had that root in me, and I think that's so important. 
Um, meanwhile, my dad's a pastor, and he would teach um, Sunday night services at my grandpa's church. Um, of course, if my parents say, hey, you have to go, I, I wouldn't go. So I skipped out on Sunday nights just about every week. I would say I'm tired. I would make the excuse I have homework. Um, but that Sunday night, it was early March of 2016, I sat in my room looking at the gross things that people said about me, just so alone, sitting in the quiet, and looking at my desktop computer, I, I felt the Lord next to me in my room, and that was something that I had never experienced before. I felt the presence of the Lord, and I knew that that was Him. Um, I began crying and crying and crying, not knowing what to do. Um, I talked with my sister. My parents came home from church, and in, in our kitchen, I, I just hugged my dad and I cried to him. I said, Dad, I met the Lord. And he looked at me and he said, we prayed for this. And of course that made me just cry harder and harder, but I knew that I had met the Lord and that is who I wanted to follow. My mom says that that point was critical for me. She said that I haven't been the same since that day. Obviously I'm not perfect by any means, any stretch of the imagination. Um, but my heart was changed that day, I can tell you. Two weeks after that happened, um, it was very routine for me. I attended my fourth year of Calvary Chapel Spring Break Camp. Um, I had gone seventh, eighth, ninth, and now it's my 10th grade year. But, and I was excited, but I wasn't stoked. I wasn't excited in a way that, hey, this is gonna grow my Christian faith. I thought it would be the same thing. I would go, I would be convicted, and then two weeks later, I would go back to school and I would fall back into sin. But I went, and that year, March of 2016, I gave my life to the Lord fully, and I've never, ever been the same. Um, back to when I was not walking with the Lord, every time that I would mess up, my dad would tell me, you're going to the Christian school that you're, uh, my older sister graduated from, and I told him no. I said, I'll lock myself in my room if you make me go to that school. I will not go to a private Christian preppy school. I did. <laughs> um, my mom told me, because I said, Mom, if I go to that school, I lose out on my honors programs, I lose out on my scholarships, I lose out on my sports. How am I going to go to college? We can't afford that. And she gave me the verse, Matthew 16, 26, and I'll never forget. She said, you can make all the money in the world, you can be the smartest person ever, but if you're in an environment that doesn't push you to love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul, then if you die with nothing, who are you? Where do you go after? What's the point of that all? And I didn't take that from an ignorant heart. I took that from a Christian perspective, and, and I understand, and I'll never forget that, what my mom said to me there. In the fall of 2016, I attended Trinity Christian School. Two years later, in the spring of 2018, I graduated from the school. Over the two years that I attended, it taught me discipline, it taught me hard work, it taught me to submit to authority. I, I definitely think that I knew better. I knew better than these teachers. I knew better and I had pride that God wanted to refine in me um, just from being there at that school and I'm so grateful for the Christian atmosphere that I was given, for my Christian friends. Um, starting my senior year I had things happen to me that I was so mad at the Lord. I thought how can you do that to me? How could you take away from me what I love? And I went, I fell back into my sin and my best friend in that school, she said, what are you doing? There are so many better things that the Lord has for you. Um, and that's just things that I remember that I'm so grateful that the Lord has put these people in my life. Um, I graduated that school and I started going um, back into a public community college, which I just finished this first year. But I, I was so scared. I thought, what if I go back and there's just these things that tempt me and they scare me in class and people don't agree with me, but the Lord is so true to his promises and he never leaves me. He doesn't forsake me. He is with me when I get targeted as Christian or for my political views or for my moral stances. God is there and, and I can assure you that I wouldn't, I could not keep going to that school if I didn't have the friends telling me, you can do it, I'm here with you. I understand, I have these same struggles at different schools. Um, and every time I speak up, I have that, that confidence in the Lord that He has my back. And just because I've given my life back to the Lord three years ago, that does not mean that everything is easy. It's a daily choice that I make every morning I wake up and I have to think, is this going to glorify me or is this going to glorify the Lord? Everything I do, um, I deal with things like any other person. I mess up. I've gone through months and months of just guilt and pain and depression over my sin. 
Um, but every time that I reach out to a mentor, just texting, hey, I, I need help. Or if I go into my Bible, it's just a burst of encouragement that you can't get from anything else, not from the world, not from pleasure, not from money, not from anything. Only the Lord can give you that. Um, I'm so refreshed, and the Lord is the one who remains faithful, especially when we're young. Um, so many people, they're going off to college, they're moving here, they're doing this, and you, of course, trust in your friends, believe in them, but the one person that you can know that will remain faithful through the end of time is the Lord. And so I would encourage you, if you're in a time of doubt, if you're in a time of worry, if you're in a time of sadness, or just a dry patch in your devotions, reach out to someone. You are not alone. You have mentors, you have church leaders, you have youth leaders, you have anyone. They want to pour into your life. Please reach out to them. That's what they're there for. Um, a verse that I live my life by from when I was five years old in Awana Cubbies is 1 John 4.19. And I'm sure you can go on and on and on about this verse. There's so much to pull from it, but it, it says that we love him because he first loved us and so short, so simple, but it just reminds me that I love the Lord because he loved me first. It was him who granted me love and when he gives that to me, that's so that I pour it out and he refreshes me continually with his love so that I can love others. I've never lived away from home. I go to a school in my own neighborhood like even on the flight here from Hawaii I was like, what if something happens to me like what if I don't know just something really bad happens and I'm in danger like what am I gonna do and I'm, I'm in a foreign country but as soon as I got here and as soon as I met everyone and people pick me up from the airport they're like you don't have to worry about anything and I've definitely felt like the Lord here and not because things are dangerous because things are so so safe here but just the Lord has protected us um, traveling but the people here in Japan are so nice they want to help you they're not gonna hurt you they're not gonna harm you but that's just something that I'm really grateful for here in Japan just the kind-hearted welcoming spirit and I'm so grateful for that especially at Calvary Kinoan. Thank you so much for watching my testimony. I hope that I've encouraged you in some way. Um, please check out CCVC Japan if you want to get in contact. I would love to say hi. But for now, bye. I'll see you later. Thank you so much for watching.